Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coolum video and another plug side chat. So for this one I, I kind of wanted to just dive into a, a little bit of a uh, rumor mill that's been going around. So apparently some people ran into some GM employees who were driving around in uh, Bolt EVs out in Michigan and I'll put a link in the in below in the video, but this was reported on uh, Transportation Evolved with uh, Nikki, where apparently some some users had emailed in, and uh, I guess they had talked to these GM employees who were driving these newer test uh, Bolt EV vehicles, and they said that they had been driving around for a few hours and still had 200 miles of range left. So I wanted to just chime in with my thoughts on what this could possibly be. So first is the, the least exciting, uh, much to do about nothing, right? Because if I have a full battery in my Bolt EV and I'm driving around town, I could in theory drive around for a couple of hours and uh, still have two, 200 miles uh, of range left. It, it all depends on how intense the driving is. If I'm just you know tooling around town doing 25, 35 miles an hour, yeah, you're easily going to get over 300 miles out of the battery. Uh, so, I mean, if that's the case, then, you know, like I said, it's much ado about nothing. No, no big deal. But then the, the alternative to that is, no, no, maybe they're making a longer range uh, Bolt EV. And, and I do think this makes more sense because it's in keeping with GM's strategy, right? And this wouldn't be a change that would happen for the 2019 Bolt EV. It would be a change probably that would happen for the 2020 Bolt EV. But, um, you know, or possibly a mid-year refresh in 2019. But they've always stated that they, they want to be pushing the range out farther. And that that is something that, that I agree with. Uh, I, I really do think mainstream electric vehicles need to have a minimum uh, of at least 300 to 350 miles of range and and the reason for that is that's that's the minimum for most uh internal combustion engine vehicles as well so so you want to start at the at the very least at the same baseline as what you're sort of trying to supplant or replace now given that there there are a couple of possibilities right so it could be the same battery technology and if it's the same battery technology then really they, they needed to do something to um, add space because there's really not enough room in a Bolt EV right now uh, for new batteries, right? That, that's, and, and what you would be looking at, again, if this is, if the driving that they were doing was just normal driving and that type of driving you'd expect to see 200 to 250 miles of range in the Bolt EV and now you're seeing well over 300, uh, then you're looking at a significant increase in capacity, at least 15 to 20 percent, but more likely 30 percent or so. And, and we have seen this before in BMW's i3. Their 60 amp hour pack uh, was replaced. I believe it was a 94 amp hour pack that had almost the same exact footprint and the same size pretty much. Um, so, so maybe there's a possibility of this sort of incremental uh, improvement in energy density at, at the, the battery pack level. I mean, in which case, a 30% increase, yeah, that, that would make sense. And you'd end up with a car that would have a, about a, you know, say an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack. And you would have about 310 to 320, maybe a little bit more uh, miles out of a Bolt EV. So, so that's possible. But then the other possibility is solid state batteries. And this is the one that I'm thinking could have a, a little bit more, um, a, a little bit higher likelihood of, of being true. Because again, this is in keeping with, with GM's uh, movement towards these longer range electric vehicles. They're, they're stating that they want to be adding, you know, almost 20 new electric vehicles to their lineup. Some of them are going to be SUVs. Uh, and, and so those vehicles are going to need some very high energy density batteries. Uh, and they're talking about making these vehicles profitable, uh, you know, 
early on in the 2020s. So, so in order for that to happen, yeah, they're going to need to be able to make these batteries cheaply, and they're going to need to make them large enough to, say, take something like a Traverse or even a fast, uh, a larger vehicle than that and, and somehow propel it 300 to 350 miles. And so maybe it's a little bit early for them to be, um, you know, testing out solid state batteries, but maybe not because uh, GM has been investing in, uh, I believe it was the same research group that that professor good enough uh, had been working on their batteries with. So it, it, that's possible. And GM has been known to sit on patents as well uh, that, uh, you know, aren't really made public yet. And they're still sort of testing out the, the functionality and solid state batteries. We don't know a whole lot about them yet. One of the one of the reports, I believe, that uh, Professor Goodenough's uh, group had released is they might actually increase in capacity over time, which seems counterintuitive. But at the same time, it that could also just be the way the battery wears out. Right. So you start off with a 300 mile battery. Uh, five years into ownership, you have a, a 600 mile battery and then it burns out. So, I mean, it is possible that that you could you could face something like that as well. We don't we just don't know a whole lot about solid state batteries um, and, and how they wear over time, at, at least with lithium or possibly sodium uh, solid state batteries. Uh, of course, the other good good aspect of that is too. Um, there are good enough aspect of it according to professor Goodenough's team I, I believe they eliminated cobalt from the batteries completely uh which would would be beneficial as well but but either way what we do kind of know about solid state batteries is their energy density would be at least two or three times uh what current lithium battery energy density is so just going by that alone right if you you, you put uh, a solid state battery in a bold EV instead of a 240 mile vehicle, you, you now have a 480 mile vehicle. And that's, that's very compelling. And that's sort of at a minimum level. And then of course, the other thing is uh, you can charge at a faster rate uh, up to higher capacities as well, uh, because they're more resi resistant to what they call dendrite buildup within, within the battery. Uh, GM has already talked about this in their, uh, owners advisory groups where they uh, ask questions and do surveys and uh, I think based on some of their feedback they probably know that they need to move toward a more aggressive uh, charging and one of one of the options they had mentioned was you know would you be interested in essentially 200 plus kilowatt charging if it meant that your battery might wear faster than normal or degrade. And I believe they use the term fade faster than normal. Um, and I, I have to imagine the overwhelming number of people said, yes, we would, we would be willing to put up with a higher percentage of battery degradation over time if it meant three or four or five times faster charging speeds than what we're currently seeing. And the truth of the matter is, too, if it's direct result of those charging speeds, then that's not really going to be an issue. Most of your most of your charging is still going to be done slow charging at home or work, and uh, you know most of your charging on on the road, it, especially once you hit four to five hundred miles of range, is going to be done at slower DC fast chargers. Uh, the only times you would be using or taking advantage of that faster charging speed is if you didn't have anything to do with that stop. If it was simply uh, for the purposes of extending your drive and, you know, as some people keep referring to it, splashing and dashing, well then, yeah, sure, 15 minute stop to get, you know, 200, 300, 400 miles of range, uh, you would do that occasionally, but not very often, right? So... Anyway, I don't know if there's too much, uh, you know, to actually back that uh, that rumor. How, you know, like I said, it could be as simple as they've just been driving around town at slow speeds, and the car is efficient enough that they're going to hit over 300 miles, and they just thought they would mention it. Uh, 
but it, this sounds like it might be more than that. It sounds like they are testing uh, longer range uh, bolt EVs, and it would make sense to you. You want to keep ahead of your competition. So if Hyundai shows up with their uh, 64 amp uh, kilowatt hour uh, Kona EV with with close to 300 miles of range or 250 to 300 miles of range, well. You don't want that to get onto the market for too long before you exceed it by 50, 60, 70, 80 miles. And then hopefully, again, along with that, uh, faster charging as well. So hopefully this is uh, evidence that GM is evolving and innovating um, faster than I think a lot of people are giving them credit for. Uh, they tend to do that, I, 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 do, I do believe, uh, from what I've seen. And, and hopefully it means that they're, they're planning to stay ahead of their competition. Uh, you know, Nissan, Hyundai, they, they, they can be releasing these, these vehicles to catch up to what the Bolt EV is now. Uh, but there's no reason for GM to not surpass that in the next year or so uh, and force Hyundai and Nissan to catch up again. So anyway, uh, I'm curious what you guys think or... If you guys happen to know any more details about some of these rumors that are floating around, if you've encountered some of these uh, new test Bolt EVs or, uh, you know, from the, uh, the GM employees who are, who are testing them out, if you've encountered them, I, I'd, love to, uh, I'd love to hear any, any more rumors from the street. But uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It, it really helps out the channel. And uh, as always, thank you for watching.